Blair, I will be covering the basics and the heritages of the kobold ancestry. This is another uncommon ancestry, so make sure you talk to your GM about playing this ancestry beforehand. For basics, kobolds get 6 ancestry hit points, and they have a speed of 25 feet like most ancestries do. For ability boosts, kobolds get dexterity and charisma, as well as a free ability boost that can be anything except dexterity or charisma. The ability flaw for kobolds is constitution. For languages, kobolds get draconic and common, as well as languages equal to their intelligence modifier. Also, your traits are humanoid and kobold. Kobolds also have dark vision and the draconic exemplar ability. Dark vision allows you to see just as well in darkness as you can in bright light. For the dragon exemplar ability, you choose a type of dragon from the table that I have on screen. This determines your character's scale color and other abilities, which I will cover in this video and my kobold feats video. Now let's talk about kobold heritages, starting with the cavern kobold. When climbing on natural stone features like stalagmites and stalactites, you move at half speed on a successful athletics check and full speed on a critical success. If you have the quick climb skill feat, you move at full speed on a success. Also, if you roll a success on an acrobatics check to squeeze through an area, you get a critical success instead. If you want to be able to move all over in caves and underground areas, this is a fantastic heritage. If your party is tactical, this is also a very good heritage. Caves and underground areas are very common in this game, so consider this heritage if you want to take advantage of that. Next we have the Dragon Scaled Kobolds. These kobolds gain resistance equal to half their level, minimum 1, to the damage type of the dragon they chose for their Draconic Exemplar ability. So if you chose Green Dragon, you gain resistance to poison. If you chose Red Dragon, you gain resistance to fire, and so on. This resistance is doubled against Dragon Breath weapons. This heritage is really good, especially late game. Gaining resistance to one type of energy damage will always be good. Plus, it gets doubled if you get hit by a br Dragon Breath weapon? Fantastic. Definitely consider this heritage as well. The third heritage that kobolds have access to is the Spell Scale Kobold Heritage. This heritage just gives you one arcane cantrip as an innate spell at will. Any arcane cantrip, as long as you have access to it. This cantrip gets heightened as normal for cantrips in this system. You become trained in arcane spell attack rolls and DCs, and you use your charisma modifier for this spell. Getting a cantrip, even if you're not a spellcaster, is always going to be good. Yes, it does have to be from the arcane list, but there are a lot of good cantrips on all the spell lists. And even if you want a spell on a different list, check and see if it's on the arcane list too, because a lot of spells overlap between lists. For example, the Produced Flame Cantrip is on both the Arcane and the Primal spell lists. Consider this heritage if you are playing a Kobold. Strong Jaw Kobolds gain a Jaws Unarmed Attack that deals 1d6 piercing damage. Jaws fall into the Brawling Weapon group and have the Finesse and Unarmed traits. If you want to be able to bite people as a Kobold, take this heritage. Otherwise, take a different one. Lastly, for heritages, we have the Venom Tail Kobold Heritage. This heritage gives you the Tail Toxin action. Once per day, for one action, you may poison any slashing or piercing weapon that you are wielding with your tail. If your next strike before the end of your turn hits, you also deal persistent poison damage equal to your level to the target. Not 1d4, not 1d6, your level. This heritage isn't that good early game, but it is insane late game. Imagine you're level 10. That means your target will take 10 poison damage every round until they remove the resistant damage. That can add up very quickly. Yes, it's only once per day. But against bosses, this can make the fight much easier. The only problem with this is that as you level up, you will run into more and more enemies 
that are immune to poison. This is why this heritage isn't completely overpowered at high levels. It is still a very good heritage against the stuff it does work on, though. So consider this heritage if you are playing a Cobalt. And that's going to wrap up this video. If my video has helped you, don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more Pathfinder 2nd Edition content. Don't forget to check out my second Cobalt video and my Catfolk videos that also came out today. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments or on the Pathfinder Lair Facebook group. Link in the description. You guys can also let me know what you want me to cover next in both places. Next week, I will be covering some tips for all you novice Pathfinder 2nd Edition GMs out there. And I will be covering the Orc Ancestry in another couple of videos. So until next time, let's play some Pathfinder. One, two, three, four.